So lift your hands toward heaven and whisper something to that eternal spirit that dwells in the midst of the coals of fire. The Holy One of Israel. So you reign, you ancient Zion's king, cry out, God, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, we cry out, God, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh fountain, so to thee. Kados, Kados, you are mighty on ah. your throne. We honor the angels of God that are here with us this morning. <laughs> We align with the spirit of just men made perfect. Now the tablets of our hearts will be purged by the stones in the midst of the souls of fire. Kados, Kados, you are my dear. Alleluia 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 For one minute. Lord, we lift your name on high. We lift your name on high. Holy, holy, the Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Majesty, Majesty. We call you Majesty. The Holy One of Israel. We extol your Holy Majesty. Hallelujah! 
circumcision that have no confidence in the flesh Kadosh Kadosh Elohim Adonai Elohim we worship you most Kadosh, Kadosh, Elohim, Adonai, Elohim, Elohim, Father, have your way in our lives this morning. Have your way this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' precious name. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. God bless you. I want to resist the temptation of spend time to worship the Lord. Sometimes you come to preach, if you are not careful, you just take off because you have knowledge. And you cannot download the dimensions of God that is needed for the time. We don't preach because we read the Bible. We don't preach because we know about God. We preach because the witness of God is something he has committed to us. And so every time we come, it's important we align our hearts again to his government so that he can flow through us and so john began he said that which was in the beginning which we have heard which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life he said that life was with the father we have seen him and that is what we have come to commit to you that you may have fellowship with us and he said truly our fellowship is with the Father. There is so much preaching going on. There is so much knowledge littered. But very few know God. Including we pastors. The reason is because we are cerebral. There is a protocol. There is a courtesy. That is required in the presence for a man to be able to hold on to the holy oracles of God and to communicate it to a generation this is why before we preach sometimes we wail, we cry, we weep we roll on the floor that by all means we will be able to stream his dimensions Jesus said if you have heard me you have been washed These words you have heard have washed you. If you sat under Jesus' ministration, you are cleansed just by listening. 
because for their sakes I sanctify myself that they too might be sanctified this is not religion this is the ability to download God into the heart and the soul of a man you could meet Jesus as a harlot you will probably leave him as an evangelist a transition can take place in a moment because he's a conductor of life and essence this is the first lesson we must learn as preachers that our knowledge counts for nothing our fame counts for nothing if we cannot communicate God to a generation every time people sit under us they shouldn't go with love for us and our messages but they should catch a hunger and a commitment to the Lord the idea is for you to be reduced so that Jesus is magnified he said I must diminish and he must increase we don't know how to bring men to the Lord and it's a body because we cannot subject ourselves to the protocol it almost becoming a showbiz and the devil is roaring through the territories darkness is permeating through the borders all we do is grow in church number in fellowship number and then a number of preachers the Lord will help Ali I you know yesterday when we worshipped and left some people will be like ah, ah. <laughs> if you don't do what God is doing on your own we are not preachers we are not teachers we are not apostles we are witnesses but sometimes our witness can take an apostolic dimension sometimes our witness can take a preaching dimension sometimes our witness can take a teaching dimension sometimes it takes a worship dimension the idea is to communicate God and that's the only way God can be powerful you know the puppet has no choice he's on the stage everybody's clapping but he's being controlled you see the hand go like this you are shouting he has no choice he's being regulated and that's what we are before the Lord so that he can use us he can find free flow and that's the only way God can reach a generation that's why Paul began he said that I'm an apostle of Christ he went forward he said I'm a servant of Christ he went forward he said I am a prisoner at that point he has no will of his own anymore that's where Jesus get got to in Gethsemane not my will but thine this is the business of the presence and this morning I, I'm trusting God that as I share the little I've come to share God we amplify it in your heart in the name of Jesus man is an idea and a product of the fellowship of deity what we call man is an offspring of deity in the beginning in eternity past before God began the project of creation when God dwelt in himself when eternity had not even been created that community of the divine in their intense fellowship and koinonia you know when nothing was created and nothing was only God was there was a communion a, commu a fellowship an intense interaction that existed between that community of three beings and the father interacted with the logos and the logos interacted with the spirit and the spirit interacted with the father and this communion continued for aeons that could not be fabricated into time intense koinonia 
went on between this tripartite communion of the divine dwelling in nothing but in themselves and an idea was better a song was sung between this fellowship of the divine and what was produced from there was an ideology of a being called man that means you have no reality apart from that atmosphere of koinonia where you were born from that is your habitat you cannot exist apart from that intense energy and vibration that flowed between the father the logos and the spirit the idea of man was to create a being that could walk in the depths and the belly the womb of the fellowship between deity so that offspring of deity could live and carry the presence the life and the essence of deity from place to place he was sought out of the invincible world and planted in the invisible world and the idea is that he becomes the gateway the portal the access point not just into the spirit realm, but into the heart of the father so every time man shows up what you see is not even the spirit realm. what you see is what makes god god because man becomes the proponent the propensity and the effulgence of the divine You are not a creator that have reference in yourself the reference of man is the totality of the godhead what makes the divine the divine was encapsulated in a body and that body is expected to carry the divine everywhere so when a man speaks what he coughs out of him is god when a man touches what he touches you with is god if a man takes off his cloth, the residue on that cloth is not heat, it's God. So you see, handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. He didn't pray upon them. What left the handkerchief was not sweat. It was a residue of the God life. And he said that handkerchief was casting out devils because in the credence of eternity, in the archives of God in the chronicles of kings what was written concerning man is that he will be a carrier of deity God never intended to appear from heaven in a dark cloud God intended to be seen through a vessel called man and it was this divine intelligence wisdom and desire that caused the immortal personality that dwells in the midst of the coals of fire the bible said he is seated in light that is unapproachable so even the angels of heaven they don't know him every time he appears before them in the shakinas of reality they fall on their faces and they say holy 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 what it means is that the unapproachable one separates unto himself they have never been able to come close because this being cannot be approached he cannot be known he cannot be interacted with it so in the credence of eternity when the angelic beings were created all they knew was that this creature is separate so the only name they called him is separate 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 we don't know who you are we don't know from whence you come from when god comes out of the east gate all lucifer did was yahweh comet and the whole heaven melts yahweh comet that's why he was created with pipes and tablets to alarm the arrival of yahweh because any being that goes near him we dematerialize he said no one can see me and leave Yahweh come at and even the 20 and 4 elders they prostrate flat the only way God could be touched and interacted with 
the only way God had to sit down for millions of years how can creation interact with me how can the angels know me how can the stones feel the life of the divine how can the trees know me how can the mosquitoes how can the lions know me I want to create a realm but I cannot be approached I am a consuming fire so the only thing that divine divinity better through their wisdom was to create a vessel called man so that God can tabernacle in man the Bible said in Ephesians 3 10 that even the principalities and powers they will be taught the ways of God by looking upon man in Eden everything was a symphony of the divine so when the mosquitoes came to man they didn't come to bite him they came to sing songs of glory the man could pick the frequency of God because the mosquito was meant to worship so when he approaches the man the flappings of his wings you know the Bible said the wings of the cherubim as they flapped their wings it was like the voice of many waters so when the mosquitoes show up they are bringing worship and Adam can sense that vibration of God from the mosquitoes when the lions see him they see the effulgence of the divine when david was carried to the spirit and he saw what god planned in the slate of eternity he now said what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou did visit him he said you made him a little lower than only the elohim and you crown him with glory the word glory is the word kaboid it means the full weight and expression of God that's the crown of man in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of God and Lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it I will exalt my throne above the stars of God above the clouds of the heavens and I will be like the most high but it was not given to him because when the divine was communing no angel was given that status and on account of Lucifer's attempt to be like deity he was dethroned from heaven so when Lucifer saw the man so you are the one that God had this plan for he came and made sure that man violated the protocol because the man after God cannot be destroyed the only way you can attack that man is for him to self-destruct and Lucifer understand that the technology of self-destruction is the technology of rebellion so he brought it in a subtle way by seduction the word is called nakash it means the whispers of an encounter the humans of divination he whispered to the man and the man went the way of rebellion and fell ah and the prophet said how art thou falling i have said yea are gods because you are the children of the most high but you will fall like one of the princes because you know lord why did you yield to the deception of the serpent do you know who you are and the man began to live under a curse from dust you are and to dust you shall return and he said to the serpent you will go on your belly all the days of your life and on dust you shall feed so the man that was the carrier of the glory of God became food for the serpent what a fall every time you live like the fallen man you are food for the serpent so the nakash will rule over you you know that the hand of God is upon you but he brings nakash in form of sexual appeal 
and then you go like dust and you fall to immorality your tongue is supposed to carry the law of god but it brings nakar and then your tongue become an instrument of lie and because you are falling you call it pleasure but you are dying the moment you become the man of man you become a prey of the serpent so the first effect of the fall is that we became food for the devil the fallen man is dust and the serpent feeds on dust this is why most of us cannot exercise our will we have become dust i'm trying to step down so i can put these points together to help somebody the second thing that happened is that adam was the governor of the constellation adam ruled over the sun and the stars he commanded the constellations Everything that was in the visible creation was in the powers of Adam. The animals, the beasts of the field, and everything in the galaxies were under his authority. But when he fell, he became a slave of his environment. This is why many of you are virgins. But before you are in 200 level, you were disflowered. You became a slave of your environment. And the authority that he had was handed over to the serpent so when he met jesus on the mount of temptation he said bow to me i will give you the glory of the world and jesus never challenged the statement because the one that had the glory of the whole universe handed it over in songs of solomon chapter 1 verse 6 he said do not look upon me that i'm dark he said the sun has looked upon me the son that the man ruled over the son now rules over him because what the devil was a cherub and the cherubims are creatures of eyes and everything they look upon they transmit their life through it so the moment he took authority over the son he could transmit his life through the sun and every time the man is ruled by his environment what enters him is the darkness that was in the heart of the devil in Psalm 1 2 1 verse 4 he said the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night the sun was meant to tell man the seasons of God but now the sun has become a smiting agent and the sun is not just the constellation everything that brings light to the flesh is the sun so your Facebook can be your sun your whatsapp can be your sun and you wake up in the morning the first thing you do is to run on to it and he smites you he makes you a slave you too can be your son even this education education can become your son and every time a man functions by the light of the sun even though he's of god is in the outer court he cannot touch the life of god because the light that illuminates the the man of god is the menorah and the shakina the menorah is in the inner court there is no sun there so he cannot be smitten by the sun the menorah is the seven government of heaven the seven intensification of the holy ghost so you are illuminated from within by the holy ghost but a fallen man even though you are born again because somebody is saying i am born again i'm in christ that's true but every time you are ruled by the flesh you become a funny man because the flesh is the product of the fall he said in galatians 5 16 and 17 
he said the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and the two are contrary one to another every time you are motivated by your appetite you are a fallen man because the man of the spirit does not live by flesh he lives by the holy ghost and if you begin to live by flesh you take again upon yourself the form of dust and the serpent can eat you all if you are ruled by your environment and your appetite you go back to the flesh and the sun can smite you have you been to that point where you went home and you wanted to sleep around 10 and the holy ghost comes they pray and you can't pray you sleep off it means you are regulated by the sun so the moment the sun sets you must sleep and the moment the sun rises, you must wake up but those who are ruled by the holy ghost when others are sleeping the holy ghost has the liberty to say rise and instantly the man taps into an economy that is beyond flesh it's called life in the spirit and he wakes us Ah 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 I'm saying this because they are fresh as here you can come to this campus as a virgin you can come to this campus as the daughter of a pastor it's not an insurance the moment you drift to the economy of flesh you become dust the moment you drift to the economy of flesh you can be smitten by the environment you can bear the name sandra michael your name can even be jesus have you gone to mexico some of them are called jesus navas but you are called Jesus does not mean you are living in the spirit. Most of you will come here and the flesh will begin to rule you. You will become dust. And the serpent will eat you up. He will eat you. Engineering has no insurance for it. Medicine has no insurance for it. Sociology, psychology have no insurance for it. Chemistry have no insurance for it. The only way to live as the God man is to walk in the spirit that's why i told you yesterday advice is good it's not enough a man who is ruled by flesh advising for one year the moment he steps out the flesh lost it against the spirit the spirit against the flesh and the two are contrary one to another that's why i said the air so long as it's a child different nothing from the servant even though he be lord of all he can be a slave if he's ruled by flesh the first knowledge you must have as a believer is how to walk in the spirit else you become a puppet in the hands of the serpent because when he comes with his seduction you will discover that your heart will fail you your decisions will fail you your resolve will fail you because you are a man of the flesh it doesn't matter if you are a christian or a muslim the muslim is the fallen man he doesn't have christ the christian that has christ if he lives in the flesh he's a slave and the serpent can eat him up the sun can smite him by day and the moon by night so the cure it's in Psalm 91. He said, They that dwells in the secret place of the Lord shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. If you cannot walk in the Spirit, you can bear the title of a Christian, but you will know that your life in the secret is a betrayer of your confession in the public. This is the cry and the calamity of many believers because they confess things that they don't know the economy to walk in 
if you don't understand the economy your confessions can help you there's a protocol of walking in the spirit Paul came he said dearly beloved in Romans 12 1 to 2 I beseech you by the message of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God he said then will you be able to show so the ability to manifest the God life is a function of the protocol I hear a lot of people they quote Romans chapter 8 verse 9 you are not in the flesh but you are in the spirit Paul came back and said if ye be in the spirit therefore walk in the spirit born again in the spirit but walking in the flesh you are dust the serpent can devour you at will and when the serpent comes like I began the idea is not now most times they have looked into the spirit and they have seen that the star of this child is a king like he saw that Adam was supposed to be a custodian of the glory so when he came to Adam he was not being benevolent he wanted to cut him off from glory I told you yesterday some of you are prophets from a child you started seeing visions you knew things before they happened the devil waited for you until he taught you the way of the flesh and then the more he fed your flesh the more you became blind so what he's doing is that he is robbing you of your eternal ordination what you call sex for a moment and you tell yourself i can confess what you have done is that you have bargained your destiny like esau and the bible called him profane he said when he sought it with tears he could not have it back because the ordination of god upon your life is not for you alone if you fail god will lift it up and put it on another david when stephen was stoned to death they thought it was over saul was there consenting with him and the man to lift it from stephen and rested on him god can move what is on your life to another because the spirit of elijah is not only with the teach bite it can be with john the baptist you will bargain your destiny for chem 101 what you don't know is that the devil have seen into the future and he saw a governor that god wants to exalt to authority so that day you cheated in k101 if mercy doesn't speak for you you bargain your throne in the future because when the serpent came to eve eve thought it was about an apple it was far from a fruit it was glory it was bargaining at the end of the day the authority that adam had the devil had it and he had the right to regulate it and even jesus did not challenge him you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne i'm telling you this so that in a B to get bsc chemistry you don't trade the prophet that is in you don't exchange the governor that is in you because you want to get bsc physics don't bargain the apostolic mantle that is on your life because you want to get mbbs the school the certificate can become a corridor of trade for your destiny the devil is wild he said the wisdom of this world is first of all sensual that means there's a wisdom in this world that wisdom can bargain your destiny it is never about the muscle of portage it is never about the fruit it's always about ordination many are not aware they don't understand the legality of the spirit realm so they do what they want to do the reason is because they are dust he can come with seduction and draw them out of destiny john came he said they that love the world the love of the father is not in them have you bargained 
your sight in the spirit for a lady have you backend the authority of god that is in your hand for five minutes sex have you backend your destiny you don't know you are the priest over your family he says simon simon satan desires to have you and to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you and when thou art recovered strengthen thy brethren so when he came for simon he came for all the apostles do you know if you are the priest over your family do you know if you are the priest over your state and then you bargain it because you needed to add five marks to get a c in social 104 ah we are not taught kingdom we are not taught government we are not taught the dimensions of justice and equity in the spirit realm. you have come to a ground of treachery this is a marketplace in the spirit there are more demons here than there are lecturers and most of you by the time you are in 300 level you will discover you are scoring an a in wardom because every friday you'll be addicted to a club and all your dress will become seductive you will learn faster in the spirit than in the natural you are mighty on your throne you run, you run, you run, you run, God. You are mighty on your throne. How do you walk in the spirit? The biggest lesson of your life is what I want to show you now. Your certificate is supposed to be an advantage, but if you are not careful, it will become what you trade your destiny for. Lesson until you life. walk in the spirit you cannot maximize nature the devil will use nature to maximize you so you become his agent whether you know it or not you need to understand demonic intelligence the lady that was screaming yesterday said she was sent to disrupt the meeting but there are many believers that just throwed into the meeting it's another gathering fresh as night and you came to watch drama to laugh and go back meanwhile in demonic in the demonic realm they sent their agent it was the power of god that picked her out and when i released fire on her she wanted to distract me when god was still ministering to people so that i spent 15 minutes in casting out the demon meanwhile when you gave the command the demon left already but the soul of the lady is connected to the demon so even though the demon is outside he's still manipulating her and you think the demon is still in her and then you spend 30 minutes one hour wasting the service the people that should receive impartation you use that time wasting on the demon the bible said jesus came down from the mountain he casted the deaf and dumb spirit and the spirit threw the boy down the boy formed jesus didn't say anything to him you don't know demonic intelligence you throw casually to a meeting you think it's casual your destiny is being bargained the day you enter the gate of uniport they saw your star and some of you they saw you even in your mother's womb and then you come to time you give yourself to the deception of nakash the demon come with seduction and deceives you and you step out of your king or your, your destiny he said i looked from my window i saw a young man who is void of understanding he took the part of the harlot her husband had traveled and she had dressed her bed with rubies and then he dragged the young man and the young man went her way he was a man without understanding he had gone the path of destruction are you learning something this morning you reign you ancient zion's king cry out Kado, you are mighty on your throne i wish god show you your dimension in the spirit you know adam didn't see his dimension so he thought he was a man if only he had seen his dimension he will know that he's a god because he was created in the image and the likeness of a god 
he will know that he was a ruler over the serpent and the constellation but he didn't see his dimension some of you here who are weak and living in immorality if you see yourself in the spirit you are a flame of fire you are a flame but you give to deception you give to flesh and you have become the dust that the serpent devours at we how do you walk in the spirit by making the presence of god your habitation and the first thing to do is to begin to wait upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord, the culture that is being lost in our generation. Everything is on speed. So we are all running from pillar to pole. Men can no longer wait. We are in a hurry for everything. But in the spirit, he said, when you wait, you mount up with wings like the eagles. That means you fly every time you begin to wait. You know what is happening to you? You are going above the sun and the moon. So the sun and the moon can no longer smite you by day, nor by night. Because you mount up with wings like the eagles. You journey past the galaxies. And you enter into the mountains of god where the spirit of just man is made perfect you can be a just man but your spirit may not be perfect perfect means maturity you cannot be weary anymore what has happened the god in your spirit is beginning to download into your soul so when we wait upon the lord the first thing that happens is that we go beyond the environment in john chapter 3 verse 13 jesus was walking in nazareth and he said the son of man which is in heaven is not a figurative statement it's reality while he was walking on earth he was living in the spirit that's why early in the morning you hear that he went to a solitary place there he prayed so he enters heaven before he walks on earth if you study the bible you will hear the bible said and jesus entered into the mountain do you enter into a mountain men climb mountains so the mountain he's talking about is the spirit so he enters the spirit and when he comes outside the prince of this world comes to him and find nothing the remote control suddenly can walk if you are the son of god turn these stones to bread man shall not live by bread alone the son of god jump down from the pinnacle of the temple the angels will take charge of you it is written thou shalt not tempt the lord your god adam did not know that he was a god but this one knew. <laughs> bow to me i will give you the glories of the world <laughs> who are you giving glory to i am an embodiment of glory he pleased the father that the fullness of the godhead should dwell in him bodily he knows that he's a, he's a being of glory you can't trace glory with me i am glory Say, get behind me satan and the devil fled because the man knew how to wait every time you wait you come out as a god moses in the old testament he did not have the holy ghost but he knew the technology of waiting sometimes he climbed the mountain do you know how tall mount sinai is it's more than six thousand eight hundred feet tall a mountain is not a he an old man of 120 years old we climb a mountain of six thousand feet tall that's why before you can wait you will first of all pray for a long time see that time you go to pray and then you go and check your window you come back you open the pot you check your phone to see whether you have light that is you battling with the flesh so every time the flesh comes to distract you you starve it if my phone becomes a challenge 
I don't only off it, remove the battery and throw it away. If I know it because the challenge, I call my friend and give him the phone, bring it back in seven days. You don't know how an old man climbs Sinai. You will climb because it's on top of the mountain that you wait. Many times we match a stone, the stone will sleep. He will keep climbing. And when he climbs the mountain, he will now wait on the mountain for six days. Because the one before whom you come to do is a monarch. You wait on him, he doesn't wait on you. So when Moses came down from waiting, the Bible said, even Moses was not aware that his face was shining like the sun. You know what has happened? Spiritual download. The person that went up was a man. The one that came down is a God. With a staff, he brought down a whole civilization. With a staff. Egypt was the strongest civilization in the world. In your territory now, there are three major civilizations. Wardon. Courtism. Are you aware of it? How many of you can bring down water? You know the measure of God you carry to be able to bring it down. When Moses shows up, sometimes the children of Israel run to their tent. It's not about the message, the intelligent message. I know young people now, we carry concordance, we listen to 30 messages and we combine it because we think it's about intelligence. If you cannot communicate God, you are a joker. If you, if three men rise on this campus, even the sinners will be scared. The Bible said the priests did not dare join themselves with the apostles. Everywhere you stand, a crowd will come to hear the counsel of God. Because you have become the mountain of God. He said, in the last day I will establish my house upon my mountain. And men of all nations shall run to it and say, teach us the way of the Lord. You will become an effulgence of life and power. That's who Moses was. And when the sons of the Levi wanted to disrupt the order that Moses had set. Because God told him, teach them laws. Teach them status. Teach them ordinances. And they wanted to violate the ordinances of God. Moses looked at them and said, If you die like a normal man, that's one man talking to another man. <laughs> if you die like a normal man, then I am not sent. And then Moses went back to the mountain and then he told God, Have no respect unto their prayers. Do you know where the guy is standing in Zion? A man can now suggest to God how to answer prayer. You don't know the possibilities of a man. I told you man is the product of the intercourse of deity. We can't be anything apart from God. He said, ye are God because ye are the children of the Most High. You don't know who man is. You give yourself to flesh and your environment rule you. Your environment. You. Because you came on campus, everybody is dressing naked. After a while, you join them. Because everybody is having boyfriend. After a while, you feel, I'm feeling lonely. <laughs> You are ruled by your environment. You, a carrier of glory. He said, a thousand shall fall by their, their side. Ten thousand by their right side. He shall not come near them. With their eyes, they will see and behold the recompense of the wicked. Because they have made the most high their habitation. Most of us cannot even enter the place, the place of waiting. Because sometimes it will take five hours of tongues to come to a place where your soul can wait. Where your soul becomes still to see the Lord. 
you can be on facebook for six hours but you cannot pray for three hours so your soul is scattered but when you begin to pray what you are doing is that you are gathering yourself before the lord that thing wants to pull you you say no this one comes you say no and you stay there and the point comes where suddenly you begin to see the menorah and then the illuminations that come to your spirit now becomes visions of god light from the presence and then you travel a point comes where you begin to sense the sense of the incense then you enter the presence remember when the high priest enters the holy of holies he doesn't shift the veil the bible said he enters the veil he has become one mingled with the light of god god brings him into the veil he enters into the veil if you don't develop the culture of waiting i tell you by the time you are in 400 level you would have become a custodian of a dimension of the devil nothing can help you about that one because either you wait on god or you wait on the devil you reign you ancient zion's king cry out god you mighty A point came that the body of Moses interacted with glory so much that even when he was going to die death could not conquer him God had to kill him others were beaten by serpent Moses raised the graven image for them to look at it but Moses didn't need the graven image. The serpents can't bite him. Did you not read about Paul? He was beaten by a viper. He shook it into fire. And he continued his thing. Moses had mean good with glory. Until a point came. Even the laws of God became the laws of Moses. Because Moses had become the representative of God. A point came Paul will be writing in 2nd Corinthians 3 15 he said when Moses is read Moses is the law the law is no longer on the tablets of stone the law has become a man when Moses is read you don't know your possibilities in the spirit that's a man without the Holy Ghost when Moses was killed by God, the devil came for his body because the body of a mortal man had interacted so much with glory that even the devil needed it. And God will deploy an archangel to come and contend with the devil over the dead body. The same dead body that you and I dig a pit and dump. Somebody has mingled with glory so much that heaven and hell, there was contention over his body. I thought the Bible said flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. Why then did God wrestle for Moses' body? He had, the body is, is a custodian of glory. Elisha died without the Holy Ghost. Many years later, his bones raised the dead. What he interacted with, the, the, the vibrations of God in his body is too much. That's what the Bible meant when it said the spirit will mortify your mortal body. That means your mortal body will be encased with glory. This is why Jesus did not tell us to pray for the sick. Touch them, they will be healed. Touch them. Your body has become a conductor of glory. But you must master the art of waiting in the presence. Moses lived there. Some of us can't stay in the presence for five minutes. Five minutes is like five hours. It's a sign that we are ruled by flesh. 
and if we go out like that we are dust to the serpent because we are like the fallen man if we go out like that the sun and the moon can smite us the same facebook where some go and they get boyfriends and they fornicate on that same facebook we are winning souls in thousands if i put one message on facebook in seven days it will have more than seventy thousand views so a point comes when you rule over the sun the same sun that is smiting others you rule over it joshua was fighting he said let the sun stand upon the mountains of ajalo and the moon upon the valley of gibeon and he said the sun did not make haste to go down that's a man ruling over the sun the same thing that made you a slave you can enslave it the idea is to wait in the presence and then you mount up with wings and then god downloads into your soul you come with an energy that will push the devil backward this is not i'm a catholic i'm a dunamite i'm a living fetter that's not what we are talking about we are talking about life in the spirit the third thing that happens to you when you wait is that you rank up with your tribe yes you can be in dunamis i can be in living faith but if me and you enter the spirit realm you will discover that both of us are prophets in the order of elijah on earth we can be in different denominations but both of us will spit fire and we will challenge the powers that be so you will realize that denomination has no stature in the spirit it's life in songs of solomon chapter 4 verse 4 he said the neck of christ talking about his beloved is like the mountain of david upon which the shield of many warriors are hanging so enoch can walk with god when he left this world he pulled his mantle and kept it on the neck if i travel in christ and reach there i can wear what enoch wore and Enoch will not be the only person that God will carry. It's a technology of waiting. So when Elijah entered where Enoch entered, the same way Enoch was traveling by the wind, Elijah began to travel by the wind. So much so that Obadiah told him, you want me to go and call the king so that God will carry you? Elijah doesn't travel with cars. It was popular. And the day he wanted to leave, all the prophets were aware. And he walked through four nations he came to the jordan and the jordan parted the same jordan that god parted for more than five million people what god can do for a nation he can do for one man is where you are standing in the spirit have you not heard that one man is bigger than a nation he said that same year isaac sold in the land and isaac reaped a hundredfold reward and he became exceedingly great that they things and beating they came to him and said please depart from us for you are bigger than us the same thing god does for a nation he can do for one man because one man can become a nation if i enter in the spirit and i connect to abraham i become an abraham in my generation you don't know how spiritual these men live their life to be champions you think it's religion the Bible said Abraham went to defeat five kings and he took only 318 trained servants, not warriors, servants. Why would you have that audacity? Do you know how many legions a king carried? And he said, When Abraham came, he said, Abraham divided himself among the servants. So they became 319 Abrahams. You don't know this man. You say they are Old Testament. Everything they walked in is a dimension of Christ. There's no dimension of the spirit that is apart from Christ. The only thing is that they saw the crucified Christ before the foundation of the world. You saw the crucified Christ in Nazareth. All of us are walking by the same economy. Abraham divided. How do you divide yourself? Do you know what that is? 
he splitted himself like mitosis and he put himself inside people so one of them is a nation because god said i will make you a father of nations with 318 men there was no record that one of them died because all of them is abraham when you begin to wait on the lord you enter your tribe i used to pursue men of god for impartation until i knew the technology i say eh. now so it work sometimes i lock myself for eight months yes i said eight months i didn't say eight days <laughs> you don't know how to run in one year i've spoken to more than seven million people i came out of eight years of waiting i didn't come here because you like me you have no choice <laughs> Do you know how many preachers are in Nigeria? How do you think you can compete? My name was echoed into your ear. And the leadership, when they sat down, they could not. Even if I say I'm not coming, you will beg. This is not pride. I'm teaching you how to walk in dominion. Because when you enter your tribe, men can look at you and they are seeing Catherine Kuman. Yes. Suddenly, they look at you and they see best in the Dahosa. You know why? His shield is on the neck of David. And when you entered, you wore it. You wore it. So you are walking on your campus, you are like an angel among men. The thing is that you have entered your tribe. That's what John did. He knew that he was supposed to be the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. But that's not enough. He needed to come in the spirit of Elijah. So he left. The Bible said in Luke chapter 1 verse 8 that he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth. And when John the Baptist was coming out of the wilderness, what they saw was Elijah. I stopped pursuing men. There's nothing wrong with impartation. But if it will take my time, I'd rather spend it in God's presence. Because there was a time I waited in the spirit until... A hand came into my room and pulled me out of my room and took me back in time and he stood me at a door and I was watching and this was Reverend Chris who killed me at the age of 17 and he said watch his life Reverend Chris when he was 17 I was not yet born how come I went back in time God wanted to connect me to a dimension and I saw how he locked the door, spent time alone, studying books, praying for nations. When I came back, I don't need to meet him to teach me how he made it. If I sustain the discipline, I will walk in the same dimension. You don't know. You can enter a tribe today. You will bring Benson and Dahosa back to your campus. When you roar, it's the same impact, the same output. Because you must start. The technology of waiting this is where men become invincible and immortal when john entered the spirit he said i was in the eye of partners for the testimony of the word of the lord and of his kingdom i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i heard a voice behind me like as of a trumpet and as i turned that is a migration from flesh to spirit as i turned I saw seven golden lampstands and it continued and the second time the voice came he said a door opened in heaven and as I entered migration when they carried him around heaven he saw the angel shining he wanted to worship him and the angel said no I am your brother you are walking on earthly corridors I'm walking on heavenly corridors but we are one that means if John enters a service he can invoke his brother You don't know. Your advantage is not in your charisma. Your advantage is in the mountain of Zion. When you enter there, you partner with your light. Some of you are running after people, wasting time. You don't know that you are the next after Babadola. You have no idea. 
that that mantle is vacant the dealings that god is putting you through is because this is the only path through which you can enter that mantle they can lay hands on you ten times it will not confer a mantle mantles are determined by consecrations and dealings so god has he marked ten people and he's teaching them the way of that mantle and this one comes today he go and fornicate he comes and say lord i'm sorry he will forgive you but you'll be a child the person that satisfies the claims of divine justice will come to a point where that mantle will download we download so you can start out as 17 people but at the end of the day only one person will wear it because he stayed with god mortified the flesh until he ascended in the spirit and he found his tribe he found his tribe with all due respect i don't mean to be arrogant i honor elders i honor leadership but some of the people that lay hands on you you are supposed to lay hands on them this is not arrogance don't despise elders honor them so that your days will be long but i'm telling you spiritual economy bishop david the post principal now is his son in the lord The spirit term is more fascinating than the ethnic. I'm telling you, the reason is because you don't do business there. That's why you are looking at a lady, you are saying, ah, this lady is fair. No. When you interact with an angel, the light will enter you. There was a time I went to pray. As I knelt down to pray, I was so tired. Ah, I said, God, help me, help me, help me. Instantly, I turned and I saw light walking out of the wall. And as I was looking, the light entered me. That experience was like for five seconds. I had prayed for six hours. You don't know eternity. You think Moses, when he stayed for 40 days, you don't, he didn't feel it. He didn't feel it. Because when he came down from the mountain, he broke the tablet of the law and he laid down for another 40 days. <laughs> you can come to a point where three of you will hold hands together and cut his in with because when you speak you are in a company of a legion of just men made perfect paul can walk on your campus you can be speaking and paul will be whispering to your ears people will say you are wise no you are not so wise you are doing business with your elder brother you reign you ancient Zion's king, cry out, God, oh, you are mighty on your throne. The third thing that happens to you when you wait on the Lord is that you wear Christ. This one is even beyond interacting with spirit of just men made perfect. The word of God you read, you study, the messages you hear. When you go to the presence, they become life. You will notice that a scripture will become a gate in the spirit. You will know that that thing you heard is not a word, it's a door. That will bring you into dimensions in Christ. So in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 to verse 24, it begins to teach us not to walk like the Gentiles in the darkness of their mind. But that we should be renewed in the spirit of our mind and we should take off the old man and to put on the new man and from there he went further in romans he said put on christ so a man can wear christ so as he's coming what you see is an effulgence of the glory of the christ put on christ because we all with unveiled faces beholding us in the glass the image of the lord we are changed the word is metamorphosed it's not like you are you and christ you are changed so a dimension of christ comes upon you bodily it's like the crystals so god crystallizes over your body Everything about you become a seasoning of divine. At that point, you have come.
come into the intimacy proper that's what john meant when he said that you may have fellowship with us but he said our fellowship is with the father that means when you interact with us you touch god we have the ability to bring christ on the scene what you heard what was in the beginning we looked upon it and everyone that looks upon him is changed so we hand to the word of life and that's what we have brought to you if you touch john you touch christ and that's the idea in the heart of god that's why i say so so why are you persecuting me the people you are dealing with they are clothed with me it's my dimension that the mirror one of them can be a revelation of the mercy of Christ. One of them can be a revelation of the favor of Christ. One of them can be a revelation of the power of Christ. At the end of the day, your weakness is lost. And when you show up, God comes on the scene. The technology of waiting. So why others are saying, oh boy, you know is you, you see the babes for this campus, when you see it, you will be grieved. You know why? You have the emotion of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. So what is causing others to fall causes you to weep. That's what will drive you to intercession. When a brother is crying that help me, help me, I'm falling. You are crying for the soul of the campus. The reason is because you have won the mind of Christ. So a hunger comes into your spirit. When people are falling, you are weeping. You are crying. Lord have mercy. The Bible says Lot's righteous soul was grieved, but he was in Sodom. You are mighty on your throne. The reason why your emotions are your emotions is because you have not put on Christ. If you put on Christ, you will begin to see his dimension. Because thou loveth righteousness and hated iniquity. Thy God, even the Most High, hath anointed thy head with fresh oil. All of us are struggling. Running from place to place when we should be the solution of this world. Say, who has believed our report? Unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who shall declare his generation? Not just his message, his generation. So we are the proponent of his life. When we show up, he shows up on the scene. It's called walking in the spirit. The key is to wait upon the Lord. The mysteries of waiting. We are in a rush. We brag with titles. We brag with our fellowships. We brag with our church name. But we can't reveal Christ to the world. Our brag is only among us. It's only among us that people are falling under the power. It's only among us that all the things are happening. But this was Jesus. When they came to kill him, he said, Whom seek ye? Say Jesus of Nazareth. He say, I am he. He went back and fell. People with guns went back and fell. Because he said, I am he. Where was he coming from? He was coming from many hours waiting upon the Lord. He was on his face weeping. When he got up, he wore something else. He was on the mountain. He said as he prayed. Matthew 17 verse 2. The fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment glistered. And when he showed up. The child that was deaf and dumb. He said leave him. The spirit ran away. That's how he transfigures all the time. When he waits. As you wait you are clothed. You are clothed with Christ. And then you show up. You become a revelation of his life. The campus is not a place where you should fall. This is your training ground. Those of you who are leaders, this is your training ground. Those of you who are prophets, this is your training ground. Those of you who are apostles, this is your training ground. But on this same ground, many fall. Because they don't know how to wait. When we wait, we mount up with wings like the eagles. When we wait, God is downloaded into us. When we wait, we fraternize. I told them somewhere, I say, if your friends on earth are more than your friends in the spirit, you are a carnal man. 
Make more friends in the spirit. What can they offer you? Tomorrow you see people gather. They are gossiping. You say, hey! You mean is that what Deborah said? Did you not hear that there is another Deborah in the spirit? Hey! So it's me that John said this kind of thing. There is a John in the spirit. Find him. There is a man in the mountain of Kailash in India. Because of prayer, he was so bought in with intercession that the Spirit of God took him to that cave and his heart was changed. And God said he will not die until he comes. When Sadhusunda Singh saw him, his hair, he was naked, but every hair on his body is longer than his height. He had lived for 400 years in 1902 when Sadhusunda Singh saw him. And the man says, Sometimes when people are praying, God carries him and the spirit of just men and they attend the meeting. There are some meetings you show up and power of God is moving. You say, oh boy, I'm anointed. No, no, no. The people prayed for 30 days before you came. So God permitted some, some patriarchs to attend that meeting. So the moment the people began to worship and their hearts aligned, the patriarchs began to bless them. The patriarchs began to bless them. That's what's going on, not your anointing. Even you yourself, if you are wise, be calm and find out what God is doing because you may receive your own impartation. There's a man in the mountain of Tibet. He is 450 years old. There are men that can't die. He said to Simon, you will not see death until you see the salvation of Israel. It didn't matter how long it took Jesus to come. When he saw Jesus, he said, now I can go in peace. The man was tired of living, but he couldn't die. You don't know the things men have entered in God. You don't know the covenants men have caught. You don't know the dimensions men have seen. There's a word in the spirit awaiting you. Are you the one to come? Or do we expect another? There's a horn upon your life. Most of you are warriors in the spirit. But you have not entered your rank. Most of you are prophets. You have not entered your rank. You are living by flesh. This morning... I came to call you to intimacy. It will be difficult. But if you stay there, a point comes when you see the finger of God. If you know that this is the way to go, every day you will labor to pray until your soul becomes still. And there you wait upon the Lord. That's where intimacy begins. Because when that koinonia took place in eternity past, God wanted fellowship with you and I. So your spirit can mingle with him. Your soul can mingle with him. Your body can mingle with him. Jesus walked in this koinonia to a level where his soul became spirit. His body became spirit. Blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wind. Blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wind. Do you know why I didn't bother to talk about sin, masturbation, and demonization? It's because the cure is walking in the spirit. John said, Paul said, Oh, wretched man. The struggle is in the flesh. But in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, it says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Something happened. That treacherous man becomes a God. A point came. Paul said, I was under the deep for a day and a half. He was in the belly of the ocean for one and a half day. You know why? He had become like a God. So he can survive under any condition. He was, they stoned him to death. The believers stood around him. He got up. The moment he got up, he said, let's go to the next city. Wounds don't affect his conviction. Because he knows how to walk in the spirit. You see, I know a man many years ago, whether he was in the flesh or in the spirit, I don't know. But that man was carried to the third heaven. 
that's not enough he said that man went to hades and he saw things that were unlawful to be altered among men if there are things that men should not hear then who is paul walking in the spirit overnight your story can change i didn't have time to talk about encounters i didn't have time to talk about hunger the economies that god activates when a man stays in the spirit one of them is spiritual hunger that thing will come and it will begin to draw you a point will come when you'll be with your friends and when it is seven your body begins to eat you you can't talk anymore everything is as if you are sick what is happening is that the realm is beginning to suck you the realm is sucking you is sucking so you leave your friends to a quiet place at that time hunger has become a reality because you have been born in the spirit that thing draws a point comes where your life becomes a plethora of encounters. Oh. If we know the advantages that we have in Christ Jesus, we will not live like men. We will live as God men because we know who we are in Christ. This morning I want us to cry. Every time you live in the flesh, you spend from your possibility in the spirit you waste your inheritance in the spirit you diffuse the dimensions of god that were prepared for you before the foundations of the world you may not see it but if you know the damage you have done to yourself you will cry some of you did not know that you have missed four cycles already when you were 12 you had an encounter you wasted it when you were 14, 18 you had an encounter you wasted it when you were 22 and you are about to be 26 and you don't know that your window is in every four years you are about to waste even the next encounter the holy ghost knows that you have wasted three windows already and in two years time you'll be 26 so the holy ghost begins to trouble you now pray pray he knew that david will meet goliath and that's what we are announcing to the nations so he brought a bear david slew the bear he brought a lion david slew the lion so when david confronted goliath Saul gave him his armor he said no this is not the type i use this one is for fleshy men your strength is in the height of your shoulder but I am a man of the covenant of God. I am a righteous man. And do you know what the righteous man is? The Bible said the righteous is like the cedars of Lebanon. And the cedars of Lebanon grow up to 120 feet tall. So Goliath was a dwarf before David. Goliath was six cubits tall. That's 9.5 feet. David was 120 feet tall in the spirit so he didn't need an armor he came to goliath he said today i will cut off your head and the vultures of the air will eat off your bodies and then he went back and he took five stones symbolic of grace he threw the first one goliath went down and he ran to goliath hey! the bible said when goliath came towards david david charged at him that guy doesn't know fear his head is in heaven is 120 feet tall when people were seeing goliath david was seeing the covenants in the spirit he was seeing the hand of god and david said by god i ran through a troop i leap over walls he said it is the god that teaches my hand to fight and my fingers to war 400 broken men came to him in kevadula he didn't need a military training one man trained 400 men and they became so much of warriors that the world have never seen the bible said eliazar the son of dodo he fell upon his pair and he slew 800 men with his pair until his hands became cleaved 
The name Eliezer means a spare. David trained him until he became one with his weapon. How can one man train 400 men until they became so mighty? He said at a point David desired that he would drink water from the well in the brooks of the garrison of the Philistine by his richest sepulchre. And three men got up and they broke through a garrison. Three men. So every man that David raised is more than a garrison. How did he do it? By mysteries. David can train a soldier with his heart. Because the heart of David is the heart of the father. That's why God calls him his friend. So when he strings his heart, heart is the heart of God is playing. And when you hear that frequency, it can alter the vibrations of your molecular structure. That's what he did to those men. In Psalm 49 verse 4, he said, with my heart, I utter dark sentences. I say things that mortal men don't know. I can bring the rhythm of heaven to earth. If I see the angels marching and I pick that sound, when I play it, my warriors will march like the angels. By the technology of sound, David built an impregnable fortress. When I see the angels fighting, I hear the sound of their fight and then I download it with my heart. And every warrior that hears it aligns. That's what happened to Joshua in Jericho. He said, March around the city. March around the city. And on the seventh day, march seven times and blow the trumpet. The armies of heaven will align with the armies of the earth. David knew that technology. These men didn't have the Holy Ghost. You and I have Christ in us. Paul called it the mystery of all ages. But what do we do with it? We live in the flesh. So our potentials and our possibilities are locked away. Tomorrow, we must cry tonight. Lord, who am I in the spirit? I want to find my dimension. You have a body tonight to cry. It's time to bend your head on your table and begin to wail. Yaha frekanu sahariata funa Zenekagus karate kovolon de kaya Aiko rahanda parida kuvra has Aya Kado Kado You are mighty on your throne You reign You are Sh Zion's king Cry out, God, you are mighty on your throne. Why are the devourers becoming halos? Judges in the spirit. Why are the Mordecaias becoming men of power in our integrity? We are the gatekeepers. We are the warriors. Where are they? Where are the Elijahs of our generation? They are the Jeremiahs, the Pauls. Where are they? You are. You are. You are. You are. We need to cry before the altar and the powers that God will show mercy.
your name on high. We lift your name on high. We Lord, we lift your name. We lift your name on high. In your church once again, let it have its ABC. River flow, river flow, let it have its ABC. Ask for mercy, feel your church once again, let it have its ABC. Ask for mercy, river flow, river flow, let it have its Listen, the hand of God will come upon some of you now. There's a recruitment exercise going on. Some of you, your destiny is about to turn around. Cry, cry to the Lord. There you are, the hand of God is descending. The hand of God is descending upon you. There's a technology of mercy. It can change your system. I provoke mercy upon your life. I provoke mercy. I provoke mercy. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. You are the before the Lord. Be quiet. In the name of Jesus. Listen. This is how mercy works. Every allocation of your life is weaved into your seasons. 
That's why the Bible said the sons of Isaac, they understood the times and the seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. When you miss your season, it's the Kairos moment. You have missed a phase of your life. But what mercy does is that it speeds up your seasons. Your seasons may be three, three years. Mercy can make it three, three months. So you have restoration. The years that the caterpillar worm have eaten, the palm worm, the seasons come back. And the second way mercy works is that the hand of God comes upon you and you overrun the chariot of Ahab. So you can run through your future in one week. This morning, mercy is coming upon some of you. Listen to me. As a sign, some of you, fire will come upon your life so that your altar will be activated. Some of you, we enter encounters that will take you forward. And as I speak right now, give me the Simba. As I speak over you right now, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, I perform mercy over this auditorium. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Ghost, help the sister. Thank it. Let it rest. 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 When the band of Paris, Bariata Cabanas, Boracata, and the Lenes set us. Sunday, Verona Tabos, the Tatale, Akalana Soma.
brother in the white garment. I want you to see it's not about denomination. It's the move of the spirit. We are one in the spirit. But if we connect there, that's when the dimensions of God can find expression through us. You will be a prophet unto the Lord. Listen. The denominational fracas will tear us apart. We are one in the spirit. I use him as a point of contact. And I declare everyone here co-opted and recruited into the army of God. From now on, you lose the power over your will. You come under the government of his name. Take! Elion! Elion! Elion at Elion! Elion! There are some angels of fire that have entered this auditorium. There are strange ordinations that will come upon a few of you. Your lives will never remain the same again. Most of you are already drunk in the Holy Ghost. Never remain the same again. Elion of the presence of God. That's the only way you can have dominion. There's a ministration of the Spirit ongoing. Don't be distracted. Most of you are receiving impartations of destiny. I put a grace for speed upon your life. The things you have lost before now. I speak over you that the hand of God comes upon you and you will outrun the chariots of Ahab. Yeah, 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 yeah